Cyril Ramaphosa's political journey in South Africa has been marked by both admiration and controversy. Born in 1952, Ramaphosa emerged as a prominent figure during the anti-apartheid movement, eventually becoming a key player in the negotiations that led to the end of apartheid and the transition to democracy in the early 1990s. His role as the Secretary General of the African National Congress during this period earned him widespread recognition and respect. Ramaphosa's ascent continued after the fall of apartheid, as he played a pivotal role in the drafting of South Africa's new constitution and served as chairperson of the Constitutional Assembly. His reputation as a skilled negotiator and consensus builder propelled him to the forefront of South African politics, culminating in his election as the deputy president of the ANC in 2014. However, despite his celebrated past, Ramaphosa's political career has been overshadowed by allegations of corruption and controversy. As he vied for the presidency of South Africa, these issues came under intense scrutiny, casting doubt on his suitability for the highest office in the land. One of the most significant controversies surrounding Ramaphosa is his alleged involvement in corrupt practices and cronyism. Critics have accused him of using his political influence to benefit himself and his associates, often at the expense of the South African people. Furthermore, Ramaphosa's business dealings have come under scrutiny, with accusations of financial irregularities and conflicts of interest. His ties to wealthy businessmen and corporations have raised concerns about his commitment to serving the interests of all South Africans, particularly those from marginalized communities. Despite these allegations, Ramaphosa has maintained his innocence and portrayed himself as a champion of transparency and accountability. However, his critics argue that his actions speak louder than words, and that his presidency bid is tainted by the cloud of corruption and controversy that surrounds him. As South Africa stands at a crossroads, facing numerous challenges ranging from economic inequality to social unrest, the question of leadership looms large. Can Cyril Ramaphosa rise above the allegations and controversies that have dogged his career, or will they ultimately derail his presidency bid? Only time will tell, but one thing is clear, the stakes have never been higher for the future of South Africa and its people. Cyril Ramaphosa's ascent to power in South Africa has been marred by a shadow of allegations linking him to corrupt practices, and accusations of cronyism and favoritism. These allegations have cast doubts on his suitability for the highest office in the country, raising concerns about the integrity and transparency of his leadership. Ramaphosa, a former trade union leader turned businessman and politician, has faced numerous accusations of corruption throughout his career. One of the most notable instances occurred in 2012 when he was accused of using his political influence to benefit his business interests. At the time, Ramaphosa was a prominent figure in the African National Congress, ANC, and held various positions within the party and government. In 2012, Ramaphosa was implicated in the Marikana Massacre, one of the darkest chapters in South Africa's recent history. As a non-executive director of Lonmin, the mining company at the center of the tragedy, Ramaphosa allegedly exerted pressure on authorities to take action against striking miners leading to a violent crackdown by police that resulted in the deaths of 34 miners. Critics argue that Ramaphosa prioritized the interests of the company over the well-being of the workers, highlighting his willingness to sacrifice ethical principles for personal gain. Furthermore, Ramaphosa's business dealings have come under scrutiny, with allegations of cronyism and nepotism surfacing in various instances. One such example is his close relationship with billionaire businessman Patrice Motsape, who is also his brother-in-law. Ramaphosa's ties to Motsape have raised concerns about potential conflicts of interest, especially given Motsape's extensive business interests in sectors such as mining and finance, which are heavily regulated by the government. Overall, the allegations of corruption and cronyism surrounding Cyril Ramaphosa raise serious concerns about his suitability for the presidency of South Africa. While he has repeatedly denied any wrongdoing and maintains that he is committed to fighting corruption and promoting good governance, the cloud of suspicion that hangs over his leadership threatens to undermine public trust and confidence in the country's democratic institutions, as South Africa grapples with pressing challenges such as unemployment, inequality, and poverty, 
It is imperative that its leaders uphold the highest standards of integrity and accountability to ensure a prosperous and equitable future for all citizens. The Marikana Massacre stands as one of the darkest chapters in South African history, leaving scars that continue to haunt the nation's collective conscience. The events of the 16th of August, 2012, unfolded in the platinum mining town of Marikana, northwest province, where tensions between striking mine workers and law enforcement culminated in a tragedy that claimed the lives of 34 miners, and injured dozens more. To understand the significance of the Marikana massacre, one must delve into the socio-economic context of South Africa's mining industry. Despite being the world's leading producer of platinum, gold, and other precious minerals, the sector has long been plagued by issues of exploitation, inequality, and labor unrest. The miners, predominantly black and often living in impoverished conditions, have frequently voiced grievances over low wages, hazardous working conditions, and the perceived lack of representation by their unions. In the lead-up to the Marikana massacre, tensions reached a boiling point as workers at the Lonmin-owned platinum mine embarked on a wildcat strike, demanding higher wages and improved living conditions. Amidst escalating tensions, the South African Police Service, SAPS, was deployed to intervene, resulting in a series of violent clashes between the striking miners and law enforcement. Cyril Ramaphosa, a prominent figure in South African politics and business, found himself thrust into the spotlight amidst the turmoil unfolding in Marikana. At the time, Ramaphosa was serving as a non-executive director of Lonmin, and held considerable influence within the country's political and economic spheres. His dual roles as a respected politician and a member of the corporate elite positioned him at the nexus of power, with the ability to shape the outcome of the unfolding crisis. Ramaphosa's involvement in the events leading up to and following the Marikana massacre has been subject to intense scrutiny and criticism. As a director of Lonmin, he was accused of exerting pressure on authorities to quell the strike at any cost, prioritizing the interests of the company over the welfare of the striking miners. Leaked emails revealed correspondence between Ramaphosa and government officials, where he described the strike as a dastardly criminal act and called for concomitant action to be taken. Critics argue that Ramaphosa's actions contributed to the heavy-handed response by law enforcement, which culminated in the tragic loss of life on that fateful day in Marikana. Despite his subsequent attempts to distance himself from the events and express remorse for the lives lost, Ramaphosa's role in the massacre continues to cast a shadow over his political career. Furthermore, Ramaphosa's handling of the aftermath of the Marikana massacre has drawn widespread condemnation. Many have criticized his failure to adequately address the root causes of the strike and to provide meaningful redress for the affected communities, despite the establishment of a commission of inquiry to investigate the events of Marikana. The families of the victims have lamented the lack of accountability and justice for those responsible. In the years since the Marikana massacre, Cyril Ramaphosa has ascended to the presidency of South Africa, assuming the mantle of leadership in a nation grappling with deep-seated inequality, corruption, and social unrest. However, for many South Africans, the scars of Marikana serve as a poignant reminder of the challenges that continue to plague the country's quest for justice reconciliation, and true democracy. Cyril Ramaphosa, the current president of South Africa, has long been associated with a multitude of business ventures, some of which have raised serious questions about potential conflicts of interest and financial irregularities. A deep dive into his business dealings reveals a pattern of opacity and questionable practices that undermine the principles of transparency and accountability. Ramaphosa's involvement in various sectors of the economy, including mining, telecommunications, and investment holdings, has often intersected with his political career, blurring the lines between public service and private interests. Financial records and investigative reports have uncovered instances of suspicious transactions involving Ramaphosa and his associates, further exacerbating doubts about his integrity. In 2019, leaked emails revealed discussions between Ramaphosa's campaign team and potential donors, highlighting the influence of money in politics and the lack of transparency in political funding. Additionally, revelations of offshore investments and opaque financial structures have fueled speculation about the extent of Ramaphosa's wealth and the sources of his income. 
Critics argue that Ramaphosa's failure to disclose fully his financial interests and to address conflicts of interest undermines public trust and confidence in his leadership. Despite promises to tackle corruption and promote accountability, his track record suggests a reluctance to confront the systemic issues plaguing South Africa's economy and governance. Moreover, the lack of transparency in Ramaphosa's financial dealings extends beyond his personal interests to encompass broader issues of corporate governance and regulatory compliance. Allegations of bribery and kickbacks in government contracts have tarnished his administration's reputation and raised doubts about its commitment to rooting out corruption. In the face of mounting scrutiny, Ramaphosa's presidency bid is overshadowed by lingering questions about his suitability for office. The electorate deserves leaders who prioritize the public interest over personal gain and who are willing to be held accountable for their actions. As South Africa grapples with socio-economic challenges and strives to rebuild trust in its institutions, the need for transparent and accountable leadership has never been more urgent. Cyril Ramaphosa's business dealings and financial irregularities underscore the imperative of addressing these concerns head-on to ensure a brighter future for all South Africans. Cyril Ramaphosa's ascent to the presidency of South Africa was marked by promises of a new dawn, a fresh era of economic prosperity and social justice. However, as the years have passed, the shadows of unfulfilled promises and ineffective leadership have loomed large over his tenure. Ramaphosa's leadership style has been questioned in its effectiveness in addressing the myriad socio-economic challenges facing South Africa. Despite his rhetoric of reform and progress, the country continues to grapple with high unemployment rates, rampant inequality, and sluggish economic growth. According to Statistics South Africa, the unemployment rate in the country stood at a staggering 34.9% in the third quarter of 2021 with youth unemployment reaching an alarming 65.4%. Criticism of Ramaphosa's failure to deliver on promises of economic reform and social justice has been widespread. One of his key pledges upon assuming office was to tackle corruption and restore investor confidence in the country. However, corruption scandals continue to rock the nation, with the recent looting of COVID-19 relief funds exposing the deep-seated rot within the government. The Special Investigating Unit reported that over 14 billion rand, equivalent to about $930 million, meant for COVID-19 relief was lost to corruption and irregularities. Furthermore, Ramaphosa's ambitious plans for land reform and redistribution have failed to materialize, leaving millions of landless South Africans disillusioned and marginalized. The lack of progress on this front has not only perpetuated socio-economic disparities, but has also eroded trust in his leadership among the country's most vulnerable communities. The COVID-19 pandemic presented a stern test of leadership for Ramaphosa, and many argue that he faltered in his response. While initial measures to contain the spread of the virus were applauded, the government's handling of the crisis has been marred by mismanagement and inefficiency. The procurement of vaccines was plagued by delays and allegations of corruption, with reports emerging of politically connected individuals benefiting from lucrative contracts. Moreover, the stringent lockdown measures imposed to curb the spread of the virus exacerbated existing socio-economic inequalities, disproportionately impacting the poorest segments of society. The unemployment rate soared, businesses shuttered, and millions faced food insecurity as the economy contracted by 7% in 2020, its largest decline in over a century. Ramaphosa's perceived failure to effectively navigate the country through the pandemic has tarnished his image as a capable leader, and has raised doubts about his suitability for another term in office. As South Africa grapples with the dual crises of COVID-19 and economic stagnation, the need for decisive and visionary leadership has never been more acute. However, many argue that Cyril Ramaphosa has fallen short of the mark, leaving the nation adrift in a sea of uncertainty and discontent. Amidst the fervent anticipation surrounding Cyril Ramaphosa's presidency bid in South Africa, a dark cloud of allegations, corruption and controversies looms ominously. The intricate tapestry of his political career reveals unsettling truths that cast doubt on his suitability for the nation's highest office. At the heart of the matter lies a series of allegations implicating Ramaphosa in various corrupt practices and instances of cronyism, 
reports have surfaced linking him to questionable business dealings and favoritism towards close associates, undermining the principles of fairness and integrity essential for effective governance. Despite his stature as a prominent figure in South African politics, these allegations raise serious concerns about his ethical conduct and moral standing. In light of these damning revelations, it becomes increasingly evident that Cyril Ramaphosa is ill-suited for the presidency of South Africa. His tainted reputation, coupled with a lack of decisive action in addressing key challenges, undermines public trust and confidence in his leadership. The prospect of his ascension to power raises troubling questions about the direction of the country and the values it holds dear. As South Africa stands at a crossroads, the need for transparent and accountable leadership has never been more urgent. The implications of Ramaphosa's candidacy extend far beyond the confines of partisan politics, shaping the trajectory of the nation's future. It is imperative that the electorate remains vigilant and demands accountability from those entrusted with the stewardship of their collective destiny. Only through steadfast commitment to the principles of justice, integrity, and accountability can South Africa hope to overcome its challenges and realize its full potential. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, share and subscribe.